Hey there, Lala here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my Mito Red Light Therapy setup, which you may have seen in my Red Light Therapy six month video review. I'd searched for videos of setups, but I couldn't find anything even remotely like what I had in mind. Already having a couple of grid walls in my closet, I came up with this. About a month ago, I was able to add my little overhead panel and I finally had my dream setup. Just when what I lovingly refer to as my space of tranquil healing was finally complete, this happened. A burst pipe caused major water damage in my closet and without access to my red light therapy for more than a week, I couldn't take it anymore and I converted my wall mount setup to a mobile stand. On the upside, now I can show you two versions of my dream red light therapy setup. Here are all the grid wall parts I've used in this video. Everything will be linked in the description and I think you'll really be surprised at how inexpensive everything is. Make sure your mounting brackets are level and mounted into studs. You can see the grid wall behind my closet door here. There wouldn't have been room for this. See how I had to use the small one inch brackets? If you don't have much room in your closet, you can actually hang this behind clothes. But this setup won't work on the back of your closet door. You'll definitely want to check out the mobile stand setup video for this simplified wiring. I'm going to be using this when I put my setup back in my closet. You'll also see here some support arms I'm going to be testing in the future. If you've already seen the mobile stand video, you'll probably want to skip right to step three. This is what the Mito 300 panel looks like right out of the box with the stand attached. You'll be modifying two of them to be the side angle panels. Step one is rotating the stand. With this being a square, it works out perfect to change the direction. You won't need any additional hardware for this step. You'll simply be rotating the stand and reattaching it. Now remove all four screws from the plastic cover. With the panel to the edge of your table, push the base down to its lowest position. If I was doing this on a hard surface, I'd put a towel down first just to protect it. Now with the stand down, you'll be able to lift the cover straight up. This piece is just plastic, so you don't want to be prying it up from one corner. Now remove all four screws from the metal plate. These will be easy to tell apart later because they're heavier than the other ones. And then you'll just rotate the light panel and reattach the base so it's off to the right side towards the power switch. Put the plastic cover back on going straight down and put all four of its screws back in. This one will be the left facing panel. The right facing panel will have the stand coming off the opposite side where the cords plug in. And when you're done with the panels side by side, this is how they should look. Before we get into mounting these light panels to the grid wall, I wanted to mention that when I was editing these videos, I noticed the angle panels on the mobile stand moved whenever I moved the stand around and really required additional support. So please, if you decide to do a setup like either of mine, do watch the short clip at the end of this video to see how I was able to better support those two angled light panels. As you can see, the base has a wide end and a narrow end, which is how I'll be describing the sides as I'm working on them. Starting with the wide end on a number six screw, put a tooth lock washer and a standard flat washer and put it into one of the holes on the wide end of the base and slide it to the end. Now on that same screw, Above the base, place another flat washer, a split washer, and then a nut. Do the exact same thing on the other side and tighten the nuts down till they're snug. Now on the narrow end of the base, and again these two will be identical, on number six screw, put a tooth washer and a flat washer. Slide that into the hole and push it all the way forward. It'll have to balance there loose while you do the other side. This 8 inch strap is a 12 gauge galvanized steel strong tie. You'll need to drill two holes on each of these 5 and 3 quarter inch apart so they'll line up with the screws. You're going to need a total of 8 of these. Line up the second strap with the first and push them both forward to be sure they're all the way into the end of the slot. Now place a flat washer a split washer and then a nut. Do the same on the other side and then just tighten it down till it's snug. Back on the wide side I'm adding two more nuts. 
with a gap that you can see there. This is going to act as a standoff when we mount it to the grid wall. Two more on the other side. And here's how it looks when it's ready to be mounted to the grid wall. Before we can set the grid wall in place, grab a box or something that you can use to support the bottom of the grid wall. Then set your light bases at the same height. At this point, if your dog is feeling ignored, take a cuddle break before moving on to the next step. Before we get started on this mounting hardware, take a close look at the bars on the grid wall. See how the horizontal bars are on the side of the lights and the vertical bars are on what will be the back side? It has to be this way, not only because our plates are arranged for this, but the grid wall hooks and accessories only attach correctly to the front side of the grid wall. If you get this wrong, you'll end up realizing it later and then have to undo your work to get back to this point so you can correct it. Now, as for where the lights are mounted, first, the wide end of the base needs to be off the grid wall. Center the edge of the grid wall between the two sets of screws. Narrow side on the grid wall, wide side off. Okay, now the hardware. Here's where you'll use two more of those eight inch straps with the holes drilled five and three quarter inches apart. And these are the 12 inch, 12 gauge steel straps. Although I think the eight inch straps would have worked just fine here as well. On these, drill two holes two and a half inches apart so they line up with the screws that already have the plates to the wide side screws that are off the grid. Now on each screw, put a flat washer, a split washer, and lastly a nut. The nuts on the grid wall on the narrow side need to be tightened down really snug. But these ones that are off the grid wall we're just going to lightly tighten those for now. The nut underneath the strap needs to be turned all the way up to meet the strap before you completely tighten this top side down. And to create this standoff, now you'll wind that second nut underneath the strap up to meet the first one. Hopefully this close up in the info panel with the grid wall in its upright position gives you a better idea of what that looks like. The stripe lines are showing you where the grid wall is, and then those red ones are showing you where the gap is. Okay, here we are at step three, the fast and easy part. We are just moments away from being showered in red light. Other than a few grid wall hooks, all you'll need is the cables and pulleys that come with each mito panel. Unfortunately, I hadn't filmed my wall mount setup when my closet was flooded, so I'll be showing you these steps on the mobile stand. I did take a few photos as I removed it to make sure I set it up the same way. The 1500 panels are literally just sitting on those hooks at the bottom of the grid wall and they're really well supported. I do think I'd probably go with the six inch hooks when I go back to remount it in the closet. Um, I think those will work out better. While this step is a breeze, filming was not. Even after reshooting these entire videos five times, this was the only usable footage it didn't look like it was shot during an earthquake or have the person shooting with the iPhone blocking the camera on the tripod. I'll be explaining some corrections as we go, but just have fun with it. See if you can tell the moments when I realize something's not right, but I can't figure out what it is, so I just keep going. Just like they show you in the Mido red light manual, you'll attach a cable to the light panel. That cable also gets attached to one end of the pulley, and for our system, the other end of the pulley gets attached to the top bar of your grid wall. <laughs> okay, and you'll do the same thing with the other side. Now for us, we're just doing one on each outer edge of the panel. Our weight is supported by those feet at the bottom of the grid wall, the flat area of the hooks. These are just an extra precaution. Do you see the problem yet? <laughs> No? Okay, let's just keep going. You see it now? <laughs> Look at that setup in my closet and look at the one I'm working on. 
someone who thought they were being helpful attached the cable to the wrong end of the pulley. So it's actually upside down. I mean, it still works, but look how messy it is. So be sure you attach your cable to the hook that's at the end of the rope and not the hook that's attached to the pulley itself. Now we're ready to put the center 300 panel on. Look at the picture on the right first. You can see there I have four silicone feet. Now that's how I had it when it was in my closet and I just had the 300 panel resting on those with the cables attached to the grid wall. Putting this thing together and taking it apart so much has given me a chance to try different things. So here I've taken one of my four inch hooks and hammered the end flat to get a five inch flat piece. These worked out great on the um, mobile stand, so I thought I'd try them here, but I think I'm still gonna recommend the six inch hooks. I put vinyl tubing on all my hooks. Not only does it protect the light panels from being scratched, but it's also a little more grippy. Now these will replace the silicone feet and there won't be any weight on the 1500 panels. So nothing can go wrong in this step. You just have the cables in like they show you. Flip them over the top end of the grid wall and hook them on. I have two options to show you for the overhead light holder, but this is the one I'm using now, so I'll show this to you first. To make it easy to hang, I just attached it to a grid wall hook with a couple of screws. The hook part came off easily with a hacksaw. And here it is, my final panel, the MitoFlex, and the cherry on top of my dream setup. It's like showering in red light. Here's another overhead panel holder that simply clamps on. It has a lot of height adjustability that the other version doesn't. Although it's very stiff and hard to adjust, which is probably why the faux leather tore the first time I adjusted it. But you have to clamp it like this, otherwise it won't stay in place. So the back of the clamp has to be over the horizontal bar and the other part of the clamp has to be on a vertical bar. Otherwise this thing just will not stay. And as you can see, it's pretty bouncy, but as long as it's clamped like that, it'll be secure. No matter what kind of holder you buy, if the clamp has gaps in it like this, like most of them will, those need to be filled to make sure your light panel is held really secure. There's barely any surface area touching the light panel. It's really only that little plastic piece at the top. Look how easily this falls out. So here's what you do so that won't happen. See this little pad right here? That's gotta come out. It's keeping us from having just a little bit more clamping area and it's not doing us any good here. So I'm gonna pull it off and use it to fill the gaps. I'm using Alien Tape because it's thick, double-sided, and sticks really well. I ended up putting a small piece of just Alien Tape right in this space to fill it in better. And then here's the larger piece. That'll give us a good surface area and cover all the plastic. Now let's take this for a spin, shall we? That thing's not going anywhere. Okay, if you're doing either of my setups, you better be watching this part. Luckily, these stands are really stiff and I always support them if I have to move the panel around. It seemed to be enough for the wall-mounted version in my closet, but they're not meant to be held this way, so you really have to add this support. See, the panel has to be supported way out here. The support didn't end up being in the right place if I hung it how it's supposed to be centered on a vertical post, so I had to put it here. Like with all my other hooks, this is one I already had. It was a hat holder, but I cut the little end portion off so I could just have a straight bar. I'm gonna look into getting some other long supports, and if I find something better, it'll be posted in the description. See how it goes down? I need it to be up some more, so I added some silicone tubing that I spliced in half. In fact, I ended up putting two layers here. And that ended up being just right. Please let me know in the comments if I need to clarify or correct anything so I can fix it in the description or add it to a future video. And I hope you'll support my channel with a like and subscribe.